Lord Donanis, when you look at this Brexit deal, it definitely helps to lock the UK into a customs union. This is what the EU always wanted. If you're pro Brexit, why would you sign up to this? Well, it, what we're actually moving into is a, a no man's land. We'd have a thing called an implementation period, period, which locks us into the existing single market and the customs union for a period. Uh, we still don't know the details, but it looks as if it will be three years. And then everything is up for grabs after three years. And it's very clear to, to me and those, those of us who, who, who want a, a, a referendum that the right thing to do is to put that, because the Theresa May has now got her deal, to put that proposal to the people and say, hey, look at this. You've got no idea what's going to be happening to the country in three years' time, your jobs, your income, your whole future's at stake isn't the best thing to do now. You can see these terms. And by the way, we're paying £40 billion for this. Uh, isn't the best thing to do to stay in the EU and do that democratically with a people's vote? But uh, right, the problem but for Theresa May, she's got people like me saying that, but she's also got a whole lot of her party who don't like it because it does involve continuing to have a relationship with the EU, and they're going to vote against it for opposite reasons. So this deal isn't going anywhere at the moment. Right, but Andrew Donis, why, why actually make Theresa May's life even more difficult? Why not fall in line instead of asking for a second referendum at this point? Because the right thing for the country is to stay in the EU. What we should not do as a country, we're a great trading uh, democracy. We're, we're one of the a powerhouses as a country. The idea that we should settle for second best and be in the antechamber of the EU, you know, we're being likened to Norway. Well, I love Norway very much, but Britain is not Norway. We're not uh, a, a small country with a small economy, very largely dependent on one industry, which can just agree to follow all the rules set in Brussels. It, that would be a, a, a terrible future for us as a country. We're a great European nation which should be at the centre of European affairs. We should be making the rules, not just following the rules, and that's why we should stay in the EU. And at the moment, if you look at where public opinion is in Britain and parliamentary opinion, it looks to me as if there is a majority for staying in the EU waiting to get out. And what it needs is Parliament to vote for a referendum and then that to go to the people. And that's uh, right, what many of us will be campaigning for this? in the period ahead. But Lord Jonas, I mean, we have a deal. We have a deal that looks a little bit like a fudge. It's just postponing the deadline. Why go back to, to having a public vote? We had the referendum. People have voted. No, no, that's not the case, because two years ago we didn't know what we were voting on. There was no deal. What we were told, remember, two years ago was that we could stay in the single market and the customs union, we could have all the benefits of being in the European Union while leaving it, which is the crucial reason why, uh, why there was a majority for leave. Now, my argument, and you know, we're a democracy and this is the arguments that will run over the next right. few months, is that the best deal we can have is to stay. But the reality of the parliamentary situation at the moment is that Theresa May doesn't have a majority for this deal. I, 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 I'd be astonished if this deal isn't voted down in the House of Commons. So the big question is what happens after it's voted down. And uh, there'll be two schools of thought. There's one that we should basically go for a hard Brexit with, on, on World Trade Organization terms and all that, which is what you'll get from the right wing of the Conservative Party. And there's my view, which I think is the sort of centrist and, uh, and pragmatic position, that the right thing to do is to have a referendum and put as the option in that referendum staying in the EU. All right, so you're absolutely certain that the parliamentary maths are actually stacked against Theresa May, no matter what kind of deal is in this. I mean, no one's really read this 500 pages or 600 pages. Well, we do, we do know what's at stake here because it's all been briefed over, over the last uh, few months now. We know that what she's going to do, the only thing that's going to be agreed in this deal is an implementation period, which is, which is about three years where nothing changes, a backstop which locks Northern Ireland essentially into the EU come what may, but then for the rest of, of the United Kingdom, which is Great Britain, there'll then be a negotiation as to what happens at the end of the implementation period where everything is up for grabs. Mm -hmm. We know that that's going to be the deal, and, and right. that's not a satisfactory deal for, for this country. Right. Are you expecting resignations from the cabinet? I, I don't know because I, I, I don't know um, uh, what the uh, the balance of, uh, of opinion is in the cabinet. I, I'd be surprised if she gets through the next phase without resignations, probably from both sides, both the uh, the pro-European side, people like Joe Johnson 
who resigned from the government last weekend because they actually think the right thing to do now is to have a people's vote and to have the option to stay in the EU. But of course, there's a very, very powerful anti European uh, lobby in the cabinet led by Dominic Rabb, the guy who she's actually tasked with the negotiations. And I think it's quite possible that there'll be resignations there too. But it, it, in a sense, I think what happens in the government, providing she can get it through the government, doesn't matter. The big battle mm. to come now is going to be in Parliament in about uh, three weeks' time. And as of now, there is no parliamentary majority for this deal. So the question is what happens after it's voted down.